Hello and welcome back to Outer Worlds. We are planning to just have a little bit of meetup with Phineas. It's about them time. We got a few missions we can pursue as well. But I think meeting with Phineas would be the most sensible one. And uh, so far... I'm not giving much of a reason to betray him. Also, I only have, like, maybe gratitude to be his lackey, but in a way, like, his, his ideas are kind of aligned with mine. And although he's most clearly uh, holding back information from me, he so far he didn't wrong me. Other than uh, putting me, asking me to do Dangerous stuff. Is he actually hiding behind the bulletproof glass? We'll see. He's still hiding behind the, apparently a bulletproof glass. But is it really a bulletproof glass? Oh, actually he has like a bit of thingy there. Armored glass! Not bad, eh? Yeah. Okay. Phineas? I've kept myself busy in your absence. Optimized my formula. I'm now confident I can revive the remaining colonists. Yeah, we gotta talk. All I need now is the dimethyl sulfoxide. I'll take as much as you can give me. Forget about the chemicals for a second, the colon's on the verge of collapse. I found your chemicals in the Ministry. The board was testing them on human subjects. Human test subjects? Oh, that's grotesque. That's unthinkable. That's exactly what I'd expect out of the board. I had to <clears throat> let the test subjects die, but I brought back all the chemicals they had. Yeah. The pr problem is, and this is just, the game was not giving me an option to like, you know, just save everybody. So it was a choice of taking like only a part of the chemicals and uh, letting the experiments continue or just take it all. And that effectively puts to an end to the experiments, but also uh, Results in the death of so many, uh, well, like two dozen or so or a dozen or so people who are getting experimented upon. But also, it seems like uh, being part of the experiment, if signing up for it in the first place, it was a death sentence. And yeah, so it, w it was those people would have died for sure if I was not there. But in, effectively, I kind of killed them as well. So it's. It's definitely a great choice. But if I... My point is, if I just went with the option that I take like 28% of the formula or just the chemical and sneak out, then the experience would have continued for, for a very, very long time. Unless the board's hand was forced and they would have... Uh, they probably... What they probably would have done is that they would have acknowledged that uh, the hibernation just doesn't work. This whole, you know, that their plan just doesn't work. And they would have sell, sold it to the people anyway. And this is what they might try to do anyway. But uh, with the extra steps of killing a lot of people on the way, trying to make it work. Because they were not just doing it for the people, but also they were considering it doing it uh, to save themselves. I had to let the test subjects die, but I brought back all the chemicals they had. Thank you. You've brought me enough chemicals to get started, at least. I'm just sorry they came at the cost of human lives. Those poor people, they must have died in agony. What exactly was the board trying to accomplish? I feel like I wasn't really the one who, you know, like, stabbed those people. But I was the one who just, you know, 
gave them the mercy kill, in a way. Some of them might have been okay. And, but among the choices that I was offered, I, f I believe this was the, the, the right one. Of course, it was the option that, you know, take all the Kremkos, you know, wake up all the colonists, and try to escape with the colonists, with the test subjects, you know, wake up the test subjects, then uh, take all the juice and go. That would have been my choice, if that was a choice. Of course, most test subjects would have died anyway. But maybe someone would have survived. And they, were, they would have obviously died if uh, uh, the experiment continued. So, I would have chosen that if that was an option, but... Uh, lack of that, I, ha I went with the, the one out of two that, that was a little better. Although still difficult to make. This is one of those classic, uh, you know, questions like, you know, would you let a train run over like a uh, five person? Or would you just uh, let the train run over, you know, people all the fucking time? <laughs> okay, this is not how it usually goes. You know, just usually like more people or less people. But you gotta make a choice of, uh, you know, you gotta be responsible in a way for uh, a death of somebody. I guess. Uh, science, uh, the board's trying to mitigate damage to human tissue during the revival process. You say the board's trying to freeze their subjects over and over again without inflicting permanent damage? Well, they're nowhere close to solving that problem. Something about this feels wrong. I don't know why the board would ever conduct such an experiment, unless they're working on some kind of hibernation technology. I'll tell you this much. The board scientists are hopelessly lost. After years of fruitless experimentation, they've made exactly zero progress. The colon's on the verge of collapse. The board's been trying to cover it up. I know! I've suspected as much for years. Of course, I don't expect the board to do a thing about it. They've been driving our colony to the brink of destruction for decades. The board's mismanagement put our colony on the road to collapse. If we don't put a stop to them, thousands of colonists are going to die. I'm not exactly sure if this, this is uh, the board's fault. They certainly didn't much help to prevent it. It gets worse. The chairman is planning on freezing every work in Halcyon. You're saying that Halcyon's on the brink of total collapse? And the chairman's plan to save all of us is to save himself? Yep. I always knew Halcyon was heading toward a system's collapse, but I never imagined we were already there. The board made this crisis, and now they want to solve it by freezing the rest of us? That's not a plan. That's a goddamn escape clause. Do you realize what this means for the Hope? For your fellow colonists? The board's going to kill them all, toss them out into space, just to make room in their hibernation chambers. That's very possible, but it's kind of irrelevant, because this hibernation is most likely, is just going to be a, a permanent, you know, it's basically death. It's basically death, because these uh, hibernation chambers and these colony ships weren't really designed to just uh, freeze people indefinitely. But even ignoring the technicals, like that's not what people sign up for. We need to think about this. There has to be something we can do. Short of lining up every member of the board and shooting them in the I'm open to that. Do you know what's waiting for us on the Hope? Scientists, engineers, artists, the brightest minds Earth ever sent us, uncorrupted by the board. The board's going to dispose of them all and transform the Hope into a prison for the rest of us. They're likely on their way to the Hope as we speak. We need to get to those colonists before the board. 
I have enough chemicals to start reviving a few of them, but no easy way to get them off the hope. Well, the board planning to uh, take over the hope is certainly uh, that's basically murder. Like those people, also they are very much betrayed. Imagine that you sign up for a colony mission, and uh, like when you go to sleep in a hibernation chamber and you never wake up, that's death. But not only death, but others are choosing death for you. And that's not what you sign up for. Not like, you know, if, you know, you sign up for a colony mission and, like, you know, the shield mal malfunctions and everybody dies, you know. It's crap, you know. It sucks, people fucked up, but, you know, that's just how it went. But, you know, this is a conscious decision, not like a mistake. There's a way, it's not exactly safe, but we could skip the hope into the system. Uh, what? Merciful gibbering law, you're a genius! We bring the hope to us. Skip the entire ship across the distance of colony space. Right next to my lab. Right next to your lab? The hope's probably damaged. We have to re root the power from the unreliable. I wouldn't actually park it next to the lab. I think the most sensible option would be uh, Terra 1. Yes, yes, exactly. You're a step ahead of me, but I perceive the shape of your plan. If we link up the hope to the unreliable, then use your navigational computer to calculate a reasonably safe vector, we can skip the entire colony ship into the rings of Terra 2. I don't know much about skip drives, not the physics, anyhow. I do know the Hope's real massive. How's our bitty little ship supposed to skip it? Excellent question, my sharp-witted mechanic. You will use your own ship to power up the Hope's skip drive. Your navigational computer can handle the rest. I've got a healthy disregard for personal safety, but this sounds crazy, even to me. Your instincts are correct. By any reasonable definition of sanity, this plan is crazy. Isn't it wonderful? You'll need to switch on the Hope's auxiliary power using the unreliable. Then, head to the bridge. Your navigational computer, Ada, should be able to activate the Hope's skip drive. Once you've skipped the Hope next to my lab, I'll have easy access to the frozen colonists. I can start reviving them immediately. Yeah, but we're still gonna need food. Wait, I got some questions. Certainly. How can I help? They're gonna need supplies. People aren't going to notice a gigantic colony ship slamming into the rings of Terra 2. Unlikely. The hope is as massive as the Groundbreaker, but compared to the rings of Terra 2, positively minuscule. The board might notice. Possibly, depending on the position of their heads relative to the depth of their collective posteriors. Huh. Okay. Should I expect any resistance? It wouldn't surprise me. When I pulled you out of the hope, the board nearly intercepted me. I expect they stepped up security since my little act of larceny. That's it. The, but the biggest concern is, assuming he's telling the truth, and we still don't know if he's telling the truth. This is just such a, a, a stroke of genius that he's behind a bulletproof glass the whole time. This is amazing. This just... I don't know who the fucking uh, thought of that, but it's amazing. It just adds to that feeling that you can never trust him. Even if he even if he wasn't hiding behind the bulletproof glass, I still wouldn't trust him because he's not he's not really coming with me, he's just directing me to do things. Oh that's the wrong thing. Crew report. Bioka is drunk. Surprise. Wait though! Uh okay. So Phineas's lab. Where are we going? 
What? I already... What? I forgot to give him the gas. Ah, oh, come on. I got so excited that like, oh yeah, I'm going, I'm going. And I like, no, 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 no. No gas for you. All right. I'm coming back with the gas. What? Welcome. I got the gas, by the way. You've done fine work for Sublight. By the transitive property of reputation, I am now in Sublight's good books. Well done. Well, they kind of kicked me out. What's on your mind? I got the gas. And the adjutant asked me to plant a tracking signal in your lab, but I'm not going to do it. You absolutely should. <laughs> what? I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. Sarcasm, the last refuge of the witness. <laughs> the adjutant must have sent you some kind of tracking code. If you don't use the code, she'll suspect you betrayed her. Yeah? I think you should use the code and send a corrupted tracking signal. That should buy me some time. <laughs> right. Get it, you want to prepare? So you're okay with this? The enemy is bound to discover my hideout sooner or later. I'm prepared for that eventuality. This is just my way of buying myself a little time. Use my communications terminal to corrupt the tracking signal. While the board busies themselves trying to decipher it, I'll have plenty of time to prepare my defenses. Yeah, but they're gonna show up <laughs> quite a bit. I, I want to talk about the hope. Certainly. How can I help? No, I don't think so. So I need to throw it in here. Or how do I do this? How do I give you the gas? Okay. I got the gas. Don't you want it? I've heard those iconoclasts have a rather smashing opinion of you. Get it? Smashing iconoclasts? <laughs> no, They're dumb. Mind. What's on your mind? Why don't you want the gas? God damn it. Okay, so I absolutely should. Ultra. So this probably means that we have scaling loot in all containers, in all locations. Send corrupted tracking signal. Okay. Ah, that should do it. You've bought me more than enough time. Can we talk? You wanna talk? So we're really gonna do this? Why not? I've seen lots of crazy, Captain, but Phineas is in a class of his own. Do you really think he knows what he's doing? Sending us to skip the hope into Teratu's orbit right under the board's nose? I'm not sure, but it's our best choice. There's a sobering thought. Makes me want to drink. I think this whole plan's insane, but it'll make a good story, you know, if we survive. Speaking of, I get that Phineas thinks he's saving the colony, but what about you? Why risk your neck on this crazy scheme? What about you? You're still with me? That's just uh, redirecting. The people of Halcyon, Halcyon deserve a chance. So do the colonists on the Hope. But as I'm going to do, for better or worse, my future is tied with Halcyon now. Yeah, I guess we might as well do something about it. Makes you wish for a fancier ship with bigger engines. Don't know about you, but I'd be out of here if I could. Still, all this depends on the other Hope colonists. Are they gonna pull us out of the shit? Or are we all just going to leave a bigger, uglier stain on this corner of the galaxy? <laughs> if they're half as capable as me, we'll be in good hands. I don't know. I'm not optimistic, but we gotta try something before we all go down. I'd settle for a bottle of whiskey and some lubrinacine, but I've never been much of a self-starter. 
Well, whenever you're ready to do this, I'm with you. The part with the hope, I mean, not the other thing. Right. Anything else? Go back to the ship for now. Okay. See you around. No! And that's not what I meant. Fuck. Oh man. I mean, we're gonna head back to the ship together. <laughs> Is there a way to get companions? Well, I'm... No, I don't think so. I'm out. I can send them back, but I can't order them out. I can throw it in there. It just seems... Like something that might be interactable. I don't know what to do. I kind of planned my next move already. What's on your mind? Certain. Just to be clear, you know the skip drives aren't supposed to be like that, be used like that. Skip drives were never designed to be used within a system, but I skipped my ship across Halcyon when I rescued you, and that turned out fine. Mostly. That is, I ruined my ship and nearly killed myself in the process, but the maneuver was well within acceptable margins of risk. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. No more questions, I'm ready. I know you're wondering why I'm doing all this. Why I believe the people on the Hope are the answer to wow. the colony's problems. The Hope is carrying some of humanity's most brilliant thinkers. Scientists, engineers, experts in their field. If we work together, we can still find a way to save Halcyon. The board would have us believe Halcyon is beyond saving. I choose to believe otherwise. If there's even the slightest chance we can save Halcyon from oblivion, then we have to take it. Okay. So it's a little odd that I had to explore just a, a question. That was seemed non-critical. <sighs> I can put hack to 70 and this should allow me to have 100 hack when I want it, if I want it. I can, and, and I'm not sure what else to put points into at this point, it's just... Does it matter? Basically at this point I'm just... I'm, I just have max stuff. I can get my science up, maybe. It doesn't matter. I can use a perk. Headshots deal 25% of their damage to enemies within 2.5. Then they kill an enemy. Use the movement penalty to accuracy. Range weapon spray. Uh, I don't know. Any down? No, 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 that doesn't work. That does that doesn't work really, because I already have one hundred percent crit chance. There's just nothing that helps me. I didn't look into like what's the best stuff, but I'm just going by what seems logical. Like this walk speed could be nice, I guess. And uh, TTD uh, meter could be nice, I guess. Maybe I just take the walk speed for convenience. Sometimes I walk around, I could be fine. Okay. I'm not even that I'm aiming. Yeah, it's noticeable. But not super important. Alright. Time to head out. And uh, save the hope. But that's not the biggest problem. Travel to the hope, land your ship in one of the hope's docking bays. Sophia said she'll contact you as soon as her office picks up Val's location. Head back to your ship and see if Sophia has a message for you. Captain, you have a message from adjutant Sophia Akande. I'm impressed, Captain. I almost expected you wouldn't go through with it. Unfortunately, Dr. Wells found a way to corrupt the signal before we could pinpoint his location. Still, it's only a matter of time before we find him. Come visit me in Byzantium. 
We need to have a talk about the future of this colony. Byzantium is a big place. Meet me in my office. I've authorized your ship at my personal landing pad. Okay. Adjutant Akande has ended her call. Rather rudely, if I might say, considering she didn't sign off. Will there be anything else, Captain? Let's go. She doesn't expect a trap. Who's like, who, who's, who's trapping who here? So, we can go to Valbrook. This is just to explore everything, task. I'm not sure if we're gonna do this because it just seems like a lot of legwork for nothing. We gotta go to Byzantium. I wanna do the companion quest to Valley. So, I think we're just gonna go to the... to Monarch. Sending a corrupted tracking signal to the board was quite clever, if I might say, Captain. So, let's go to Monarch. Uh, Fallbrook. Um, we can go to the Hope. Wow. We're now in orbit above Fallbrook, Captain. I don't think we need to rest before this. We can just head out. Uh, Ellie, you're coming with us. Captain. Yeah, I'm gonna do Ellie's mission. And it seems like... Uh, all the companions except Sam, if unless you count Sam's way of how, how you get Sam, I, that wasn't really a mission. Like except Sam, uh, got a personal mission, and uh, of course they have their own personalities. Uh, we should do this quest, and I'm kind of curious how this is gonna turn out. I'm going to reserve my my maybe rating or judgment before I finish all of them. This looks so like a place. See. I see you're still in one piece. However, you never know when that could change. Consider our accidentally torn into tiny fragments coverage. Right. Note that all of your fragments must be recovered and must be smaller than a standard bit cartridge for the payouts to kick in. I need to ch change the beneficiary on Marilyn Fanhill's life insurance policy. I remember that one. That's the young socialite who broke her neck, right? Of course, no one remembers me for the marauders I've killed or the bits I've stolen. Come on, Typical. you want to get paid or not? That claim was airtight. Our best investigators couldn't find an exclusion for that one. Right. Let's stay on topic. I want to change her beneficiary. You can't, of course. Only Miss Fenhill can assign her beneficiaries. And she's dead. If we let every friend, relative, and acquaintance change a policy like that, people would do it all the time. Imagine the paperwork. Okay, how would I change it? Oh, you mean hypothetically. Well, hypothetically, you'd access the terminal in the back room that contains data on all what? our policies. And you'd, theoretically, add the beneficiary of your choice. But you wouldn't actually do that, of course. That would be fraud. What? You do this or you'll be filling your own claim. Please, my policy only covers paper cuts and wrist strain. Very well, I'll do it. But then you've got to go. Confrontations like this will raise my premiums. <laughs> I'll need the name of the new beneficiary. Um, Ellie Fenhill? If you say so. The payouts will flow exclusively into the new account at the start of the month. I hope Ms. Fenhill enjoys her newfound prosperity. That's it. Talk to Ellie. That makes you happy. You really did it. Give these payouts a few years, and I'll be rolling in it. Congrats, Sally. If that's all you wanted, you could have stayed in Byzantium. Being a surgeon out there isn't as great as it seems. At least half your day is paperwork and red tape. No amount of money is worth dealing with that. 
I'm just glad my folks aren't gonna live off that awful story they made up. <laughs> Maybe now they'll have to go back to real jobs. Real jobs? Maybe as line holders or warm bodies? Let's talk about your future instead. Those are real jobs. Oh, sure. You've got to wait in line for just about anything in Byzantium. And not everyone has the time or inclination to do it themselves. As for warm bodies, some companies like to keep extra workers on site to look more productive. Right. Enough about them. What's next for you? Then just do nothing? Oh, no. There's lots of paper shuffling and pen clicking that goes on. The really good ones know how to leave sticky notes in just the right places. See, this is why I had to get out of Byzantium. Not sure what comes next for me, though. I've never been much of a planner. Why not? Maybe you haven't noticed, but you can't even count on a bribe making it into the right pocket. What's the point of planning for anything around here? That's the kind of thinking that that's running this place into a crapper. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess she's she just wants to do her own thing. I mean, I, I can't fault her for that. She's just sick of all the bruise and bullshit. And she's kind of right, you know? She's definitely right, you know? I guess there is with one. Anyway, enough of that. You did a job for me, so here's your fee. I appreciate it, but I didn't do it for the money. Don't make it weird. <laughs> Even you've got to be in it for the money now and then. Why else would you go through all this trouble? Yeah, I do. I'm in it for the money now and then. That's fair enough. But not th not for this. You're my friend, Ellie. This is what friends do. You sure? Because my kind of friends will pick your pocket clean while they're getting hammered with you. I'm a doer, not a talker. Let's just leave it at that. <clears throat> Friendship is important. What else are we fighting for if not for the people we care about? We're gonna make enough money. I don't need to make money off you. We're better off and we are part of a team. We can't make it out here alone. I don't know if he can make it out here alone. But yeah, the first part. Friendship is important. What else we are fighting for if not for people we care about? You don't have to get all mushy about it. Yeah, I know. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day... They watch yours. Exactly. So, you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. <laughs> Thanks. Don't mention it. Really, this feels weird enough as it is. <laughs> I would totally up my perception if I start a new character. Like, yeah, that seems pretty important. I would just go with at least like four or five perception. I'm not sure why I'm going with 4 or 5. Like, I would just put 1 or 2 points in the perception, that's what I meant. Oh, that's it, then. So, her companion quest is apparently over. I was kind of hoping for more. Maybe another confrontation with her parents. More, more juicy drama. It wasn't quite what I expected, but we did learn that she used to live within this bureaucracy and, you know, all those rules and she just got sick of it for life. Okay, so we can go to Byzantium. And have a chat.
Uh, let's just go there first because my uh, needs gonna go down. Yeah, Byzantium. Adjutant Candy's landing pad. What? Yeah, we can go there. We are now in orbit above Byzantium, Captain. Alright. I'm just gonna rest before we talk with her. Maybe we're just gonna kill her. And... Drink, drink, drink. Uh, snack, snack, snack. Where's the snack? Which one is... Okay, that seems edible. That's edible. That's edible. That's... That's almost good enough. Okay. Let's eat that too. We're good to go! Actually, it seems like if there is a max level of 30... Because it seems like we are very, very, much, very much getting close to the end game. If there's a max level 30, then it's possible that we would have only reached it uh, faster with the companion XP uh, perk. Would have still would have been still helpful, but uh, doesn't affect your maybe late game power. If that is the case, I don't know. Not so fast. What? What the fuck is that? All right, you're clear. The adjutant's expecting you. Go on through. I'm gonna shoot this place up. One thing that we might want to do, actually, we definitely want to do. So we got Parvati. And we got this super good armor. And we got that 72 helmet. What I should do is just sell some stuff. Uh, sell the junk first. Uh, that's not getting used. Oh. It doesn't matter. I don't know if you want to keep an extra. These are all the guns. Armor is a little trickier. Stealth skills, tech skills. But I want. Yeah, I use this tech skills one. 63 armor. I can use this on. Uh. Ravetti to. Get some extra lockpick king skill. Uh, sell that. But I don't really have to. Because I can just... Actually, I, I kind of have to. Can I? I don't think I have to. So I think we can sell that. This armor is not as good as it seems. Because... Oh, no. No, no they, this armor is still good. I think that's good. Because uh, lockpicking is not a attack skill. It's a stealth skill. It's trash. It's trash. Trash. It's it's very close to decent, but it's some of them. But they're kind of trash. Fifty-three. But that's not good enough. Thirty-five. Every selling that, so that's good. Also, this can be enhanced. No, I can't. 67. Now that, that looks good. So we can give Pavati this armor that we uh, bought. Actually, she already wearing that. And Ellie is wearing a decent armor too. Is this better? Or that they are identical? Pavati can use the helmet. I think they are the same. Yeah. <laughs> and the main character is using... What exactly? Ooh, look at that! Dialogue skills. <laughs> Overall, 15 armor. Good enough. That's all we need. <sighs> Alright. Uh, yeah, we are like looking for level here. Maybe level should be the... Oh, can I list by level? If I figure out that I 
I could have list by level all this time. It seems like I can't. Level is pretty important. Oh, I'm almost 29. Isn't this the... Oh, this is the office. We visited for sure. I re I recognize this hole in the wall anywhere. But, yeah, other than that... This could be just a different bomb. Hey there, I broke in here. Uh, like yesterday. I admit part of me expected you to stand by your old friend. For better or worse, Wells was responsible for putting you back on your feet. That said, he's also a wanted criminal. For information regarding his whereabouts, you are entitled to collect a reward from Percival. Tell me why you wanted to see me. I understand you've infiltrated the Ministry. <laughs> the things you discovered there must have been shocking, even disturbing. Halcyon is on the verge of a total systems collapse. The truth is ugly and difficult to accept, but we must accept the truth before we can move forward. Malnutrition is already a problem. Disease will come next, followed by starvation, followed by a breakdown of society, followed by extinction. I know this must come as a surprise to you. I imagine you have questions. What's in this for you? There's gotta be an angle. <laughs> There always is for people like you. I appreciate your skepticism, Dr. Fenhill. But I'm not doing this for any personal gain. My angle is the preservation of our colony by any means possible. Nothing more, and nothing less. Is that why we were suffering plague in Edgewater? Malnutrition? All those folks sick and dying, and you knew why the whole time? Yes, Miss Holcomb, we knew why. We've known for some time that Edgewater was dying. The colony itself is dying. The suffering you experienced in Edgewater, the disease, the starvation, will soon spread across Halcyon unless we act. I won't pretend the truth isn't damning. Yes, the colony is on the verge of collapse, but there is a way to save it. Let's break it down, Sophia Candy. What's the plan? Just tell me what you need to... Um, we need to talk about this lifetime employment program. I'll answer however I can. Come on, it's just it's just murder. You don't honestly believe all the this lifetime employment nonsense, do you? The lifetime employment program is not some malevolent strategy of an evil mastermind. There's no dark secret buried in the fine print. The program is logical, it's reasonable, it's merciful. And most importantly, it will work. It can't work. I saw the presentation. Rocco wants to sacrifice the colony to save Byzantium. Byzantium is the beating heart of our colony. Bullshit. And as long as Byzantium survives, Halcyon may one day recover from the collapse. We must protect this city at any cost. Help me execute the lifetime employment program. And you will have earned a place of honor in Byzantium. You will live in comfort and want for nothing. Yeah. I think yes. No. Very much no. If this was any good, I would expect you guys to walk to the slaughterhouse, you know? If you if you were suggesting this system of like, hey, let's save humanity by killing like 90% of the people, sure. If that's what you want. Go to the slaughterhouse. I'm not stopping you. But don't ask other people to do that for you. And they're not even asking them, they're just like... Guess what, Edgewater, you're dead now. How long do we have? What does this... What does any of this have to do with me? What's your take on all this? When I first discovered the truth, I was shocked. 
even disgusted. I wondered how we'd allowed a colony like Halcyon to fall into disarray. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized the colony had sown the seeds of its own destruction. We have become lazy and decadent. Oh we God. smother ourselves in meaningless bureaucracies. We deliberate and argue and procrastinate. That's a pretty good argument for getting rid of the board entirely. You want the solution? Put everybody work as a farmer and whatnot. I mean, it might not work. It might not help too much, but it's better than jerking off in the capital. That's a pretty good argument for getting rid of the board entirely and being busy buddies and whatever, like Ellie described. I admit, I occasionally fantasize about making an executive decision without having body, some tedious whatever. committee questioning my every move. Do you have any idea? How much paperwork is involved in ordering someone's execution through the usual channels? It's positively maddening. What does this have to do with me? When you turned Phineas Wells over to me, I knew I could rely on you. You've demonstrated your ability to place duty above sentiment. And you deliver results. That quality alone is enough to separate you from the board's army of indecisive bureaucrats. Not a fan of bureaucracy, Sophia? Do you know how many meetings I have to sit through? How many papers I have to sign before I can make one decision? I'm only trying to rescue Halcyon from extinction. I can't save this colony alone. I need someone capable of working outside the system. Someone who can get things done. The thing is, just by you asking me this, you're already proving that the system doesn't work. And also, you say you talk about saving people, but you're also the, already let, letting people to die. Making people to die. Killing people. Like, people are just getting executed. Basically getting experimented on. And abandoned, and uh, and they are, don't even know what the fuck is going on. And the whole your, I, I don't doubt that she wants to save uh, some people, but she also wants to save her ass and uh, who she knows. And this is just a very short-sighted. I just can't get on board with this. I, I do agree that, uh, like, I, I'm totally on board with Phineas Vellas, but the only problem with his plan is that he wants to maybe uh, revive the colonists too soon. Because, yeah, it, we would need something sustainable. And the question is, can the colonists help with that? How long do we have? We've already crossed the point of no return. The collapse has already begun. You must have noticed the signs in Emerald Vale. Malnutrition, disease, high mortality rates. This is a permanent famine, Captain. We've done all we can to curb their hunger. Very soon, people are going to realize they're starving. A famine is a problem of logistics as well as marketing. Your workers must remain productive on as little food as possible. And they must always believe that food is plentiful. Yeah, but it's, it's not in the mind. Like, people need food. If they don't eat enough calories, they can, they can keep doing that for some time, but they're just gonna die. You know? This is a question of years at most. People gonna die. That's what the research in Roseway was all about. Before you interfered in Roseway, Dr. Anton Crane was on the verge of developing a powerful appetite suppressant. It would have made his career. The solution is a temporary one. Before long, our workers are going to feel the effects of starvation. The lifetime employment program is our only viable option. But it's not about marketing, how it's sold, or whether people feel hungry. Like, they need fucking food. If you had a pill, 
that allow people to uh, not need food and they would need something else. Let's just say they ra ran off batteries because they pro we can probably generate a lot of power. Then that's that's a solution, I, I guess. Uh, probably people would be hesitant to uh, accept it, but you know. Once they get hungry, like, okay, I'm kind of interested in this. Let, let's just try it. No more questions. Tell me why you wanted to see me. We need to talk about Emerald Vale. Thanks to your meddling, Edgewater is without power. Operations have ground to a halt. You've left us with a useless town draining our resources. Edgewater needs to go. I want you to wipe the town out. No survivors. I get that you board types are all about efficiency, but... Isn't this a bit much? I'm asking your captain to amputate a rotting limb from the colony. Oh my god. I'd expect you to understand, Dr. Finhill. You're a monster. Someone has to be. Now is not the time for half measures, Captain. I need a decision from you. I made one. I don't understand. What did Edgewater do to deserve this? You're completely insane. No. Allowing thousands of colonists to starve to death because we couldn't make one cold-blooded decision is insane. What I'm suggesting is absolutely logical. You talk less like a human than mechanicals I've known. I am responsible for every single human life in this colony. Do you imagine I relish the thought of killing some of them to save the rest? Steal your spine, Captain. Do what needs to be done. Why not suggest killing, uh, wiping out Byzantium? I don't understand. What did Edgewater do to deserve this? Like, okay, you can't help them. Let's say that. But why would you go out to your to kill them? Even if they just cut off supplies, like whatever supplies are we talking about here? I'm kind of under the impression that Edgewater is mostly just bringing in supplies. They had the salt salt tuna factory that. Uh, was providing food and the botanical garden that again I felt felt like a better source of food considering that the salt tuna factory was mostly like you you have tuna anyway <laughs> and you don't have to can it just to ship it out which was the whole point so that's partially why I, I, I decided to sabotage it because salt tuna factory doesn't generate food it just generates food as an ex just just makes it viable to export it. You know, you can still eat the fish. Ah, I don't understand. What did Edgewater do to deserve this? When you diverted power to the botanical lab, you spelled the end of Edgewater. But the town is still hanging on, still living off whatever meager resources we send them. With every passing day, Edgewater leeches more of our limited resources. The town is a rotting limb, and we must be surgeons. The board is responsible for this colony. This is all your fault. And, and consider the fact that Edgewater is, you know, maybe is, was, was, was helping uh, the board, the, the government, and now that they are not not in the plus anymore not not generating profit not generating resources now they have to go you know you know they are only acceptable as long as they are taken advantage of and abused that's kind of how it goes with workers you know if you have a worker and that's how it goes you know you pay a worker a certain wage and the thing is you might pay him like x amount but most likely, you know, that's what he asked for. But, you know, he generates you probably three times that, five times that, whatever. Or, like, so much more than that. And, uh, it kind of varies. And, and if the worker is, if you can just get a better, well, of course, like, if he, if it ever come to the point where, you know, that the guy is, like, not even pulling his weight, then, of course, it gets fired. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, you were, you know, generating so much value in the past. I guess you can stick around even if you're, like, you know, not doing too much now. 
that's kind of like a very simplified example, but like it cannot be really compared here. But my point is here that the board and this government owes Edgewater. And the fact that, you know, they were they were helping in the past entitles them to getting help now. And getting killed, that's just totally reprehensible. The board is responsible for this colony. This is all your fault. Because we were negligent. You're right, the colony can't possibly feed itself. And it's our fault. This is our mess. And the only way we're cleaning it up is by taking action. I'm not asking you to be a murderer. I'm asking you to be a surgeon. Edgewater is a necrotic limb on the body of the colony. It must be severed. Just like that, Edgewater is not productive anymore, so you wipe it off the planet. But productive in this case doesn't mean self-sustaining. It means that Edgewater was exporting uh, goods to this uh, empire and were getting taken advantage of. You know, Edgewater could have used those... those uh, used that surplus to, to grow and, and be richer. You know, not just be like a dirty, dirty abandoned colony where people just die, but like grow as a city. Because how the fuck do you have a capital? You have the capital because all the wealth fl flows to the capital. And the smaller settlements, you know, the towns, whatever, they're getting taken advantage of. Just like that, Edgewood is not productive anymore, so, so why put off the planet? We don't have any other option. A colony is on the verge of collapse, and we no longer have the luxury of easy solutions. Uh, this is gonna end in me shooting you in the face. The answer is no. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be, Captain. I rather like you, and I'd hate to have you shot for disobeying a direct order. I'm not under your command. I don't really have a choice, do I? Go to hell, Sophia. I'm disappointed. I was so sure you had potential. <laughs> I need to put on my normal armor. I'm just about to get shot in the face. Oh, stay inside. I killed him in the choke point. There's someone behind me. Oh shit, I need to reload. Ready for more. That's what you wanted. It was quite easy to see through your bullshit. Advanced helmet. Oh, that's still garbage. It would be nice to see the level of the item because that's a big indication of its power. Can't do that. Okay. Oh, I got skill points available. I don't know what to go for. Maybe science. At this point, I just, I just have everything. Unless I would want to branch out, but I don't want to do that. I can just put points in the science, but I will never reach uh, science 100 anymore. I can put points in the determination, which gives my companions more health, but we don't really need that. And we also we don't also don't need this. So we don't need the jack shit here. I can go with determination. Companion is downed. I don't know. What we want? 100 health with the companions? Or... 2%... 3% damage from my gun. I think 100 health seems uh, better. Let's do that. It's pretty much pointless. Oh, there's guards. Slow time that I never use. Oh my god. Sure thing. Come back. Okay, let's crack.
crap. You guys can come You're now. Right there. Two heals. Two heals again. Yeah, but these are low level armors. They're gonna shoot at me. Incoming! Take them down! Okay. Sure. What? Did they close the door? Wait, can we shoot past that? No, that's right. Heading back. Oh, level crap. Bolter pistol 2.0. I'm warmed up now. Let's see. So rifle ultra. Yeah, we are definitely not finding better gear anymore. What about the planets? The planets that I just can't uh, visit are probably... Yeah. <laughs> are gonna stay like that. Unless there's gonna be like some expansions to this game. Some crew. I definitely won that round. You always seem to, huh? Okay. What we got? That was kind of handy. I'm so. Right. Next time I managed to kill a bad bitch. Let's go to the hope. We have arrived at the hope. I need you to reroute power from our ship to the hope's auxiliary generator. You'll have to connect me to the hope's comm system so I can convince her central computer to enable the skip drive. What's going to happen if I skip the hope? If your calculations are even slightly off, you could crash the entire colony ship into Terra too. Very nice. For the sun. I don't know. Could be either. I guess we have something to look forward to. Uh, what was I doing again? Tell, tell me about the hope. No, no, no. So what? Repower the hope skip drive. Patch Ada into a hope communication system. So we gotta. They killed the adjutant. We are outlaws in the truest sense of the word now. <laughs> I mean, she deserved it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, this is a good time to take a break. So thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.